have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Video series RWG OSD Oversized Delta. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Russ. RWGresearch.com is my website. You want to check out some other stuff. So check it out. I today want to show you how to take one of these blank high speed steel cutters, turn it into something that looks more like this because I want to make things that look similar to this so that I can make them run on something like this using bearings that look like this. So be patient, spare some time here, and we'll run through the whole thing. It's pretty cool. Hopefully it's helpful for you. We'll see. Enjoy. All right, so here's what I did. I decided I was going to use the bearings I had laying around. Um, these particular bearings you see right here are plastic. Uh, some of them are steel, and I'm trying to find one for you that's glass. So those are glass balls in a plastic bearing. The reason I was thinking about using a plastic bearing is because if I have to put a wheel over the top of a metal bearing, I may as well use those plastic ones. Um, but they're, they, those particular ones have a little bit too much slop. The other reason for digging through my parts bin to find bearings is because, like I said in the beginning of this build, I really don't want to spend much money. So if I can figure out a way to, to pick some bearings out of the you know scrap piles that you see here, that would just be a better off, uh, at the end of the day, it would be better off. However, possibly, depending on what I picked, might be extremely difficult to replace. So that's also something to think about, which is pretty important. After digging through that big giant bin, I didn't find anything I liked, so I went ahead and looked for the small bearings. I have a ton of small bearings that I took out of hard drives and VCR heads and all sorts of stuff. I've had this stuff for probably 15 years. And uh, this is actually the bearing I, I originally was deciding on. It's 3 millimeter wide. Uh, I believe the center was, or the whole total was 12 millimeter. And I was going to have to make like a, an adapter and all this stuff and I was just like, no good. So then I'm thinking, well, let's look in my hard drive disc bin. Um, that's where all these bearings came from and see if I can find something that's sort of already mounted. Alright, so these are the reed head arms and they happen to have a pretty nice bearing set which is where I got most of those other ones. Those there are the actual disk drive part. So you can see right here that the there's a nice bearing in there and it's set with two bearings. Here's the thing after I took it out. It's machined and it just slips in there with a single set screw which is like perfect. So there it is. It's got a bottom flange, two bearings in there and then a top and a set screw to hold everything in place which is like perfectly what I need. So there they are, all the arms and here are all the bearings. Now yes, these all came out of identical hard drives at one time because I actually used the Mu Metal for something else. Alright, so that's that's the bearing selection section. Alright, so here we just grabbed a regular piece of uh, high speed steel used uh, commonly for milling or uh, turning, excuse me. And uh, most of the time, these pieces are uh, used well and then thrown out. But you can always recut these things and make new parts, which is exactly what we're going to do right here. All right, so first things first. We got ourselves a glass of water and a grinder, a uh, bench grinder. Now, um, first here to note that this is not a tool grinder. It'd be nice if I had one of those, but I don't. So I'm just going to be using a regular grinder and the water there you see, uh, and actually I don't even know what kind of wheel that thing's got on it, but it cut this well, whatever it is, probably a multi-purpose. Anyway, the water you see there is just to keep things cool. Now, uh, don't forget safety first. Safety glasses, yes. Gloves, no. Gloves are actually a bad thing in certain applications, such as drill press, milling, etc. You don't want to wear gloves when, when doing something like that, only when handling the pieces after you do the tooling work machining work. So grind this at an edge and that's it. Well there you go. There's that edge. I left a little bit on the top but I ground off most of it. Uh, that way when you're turning it doesn't catch the bottom. It catches exactly where you want to cut. 
Next, a Sharpie. If you do not have a um, die, tool die as they call it, you can just grab yourself a Sharpie in this application because acetone will remove it as you'll see later. So we're just going to mark this thing because what I want to do here is I want to scribe this and make sure that all of my um, markings are in the right spot so I know what I'm doing. Alright, so we got ourselves a pair of calipers. We got the uh, channel. We're going to be trying to mocking this up so we can see what we've got. And we've got the uh, the tool. So basically I'm just going to measure this and then I'm going to set the calipers so they can't move with the set screw on top. And then I'm just going to actually scribe a line within the permanent marker or ink if you want to call it that. And then we'll know exactly what we're doing when we're on the, the machine so we can not have to second guess ourselves. So here I'm actually going to mark it and it works really well. Just slide that sucker across there and now we can visually see exactly what we're doing. There you go. Beautiful line. And we're going to do the same thing for the first part. I want to actually be able to visually make sure everything looks good before I go cutting it. Even though I'm going to use the uh, digital uh, setup on the mill. Then I'm going to scribe the depth. So we've got our two channels and the depth here. Just beautiful. Alright, we're at the mill. First things first. Get our piece in there. I got it set on a set of parallels. That way it sits flat. I know it's square with the bed because I've mocked it all up and checked it with the caliper. Um, dial caliper. Then we're going to use what they call a edge finder. Okay, there's a center hole finder and an edge finder. It's basically a precision ground piece of tool, tool steel, and it's got a spring in it as you can see here, and that moves. Alright, so let me show you how this works. Basically, insert it in the milling machine, and we're going to run it up against the edge. So, what's going to happen here is, as this spins in a circle and it's offset, you're actually going to see the center slowly work its way into the middle. As soon as it gets perfectly in the middle, the entire thing will shift. Right when it shifts, right there. That is the point when you stop the machine, set everything at zero. Alright, I'm actually in inches at the moment. Setting everything at zero. Alright. Okay, so now we're going to move this thing over to this edge, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to run this guy. It's going to go and then offset. That offset is exactly at the point when we want to stop it. Now I did it again because I think I messed it up, so I did it twice. Alright, come over here. We're going to set this guy at zero. I don't know why the, oh, the other numbers are there. Okay, good. So we got to set the X and the Y, alright? So this time we're doing the X. So if you were paying close attention, you would notice that I actually screwed this up. I went back and checked it again, and guess what? I'm .0182 off. Alright, so I reset it again, set the X at zero. Now what we have to do is actually offset everything half of what the diameter is of that tool. So that tool is 0.2 of an inch, and we need to offset it at 0.1, so we reset that to zero. Now we're at the actual center of what we're trying to do, not offset. So originally we're offset, because you got to remember, you got to calculate that tool. So take off 100 thousandths, and now we're at zero. All right, so here I'm showing a diamond bit. It's actually a Dremel tool bit, but it's the only thing I could find that was going to cut this high speed steel and I had laying around that was small enough um, so I went ahead and used it I don't know if it's the best thing probably not but it's what I used and uh, it seemed to work really well if uh, you know cutting at the highest possible speed I could cut at on the mill and it really isn't fast enough to do justice but we went at it that way anyway so basically we're just going to cut this guy we're going to get it to the right spot we're going to cut it I checked it with calipers just to triple check everything even though I'm reading the numbers off of my um, digital readout there and we just cut this sucker and we just kept on cutting and then eventually we actually went ahead and rounded off the outside just a little bit with a bigger one and uh, that's it 
Alright, so then I actually went ahead and cut a little spot right in the middle. Now the reason I did this is because after I was making these little wheels, I wanted to know where the center actually was. So this is actually just a little guide indicator telling me exactly the center without having to guess, because that's no fun. Alright, then I just went ahead and made the same style of marking on the end to indicate a different spot so I could get a visual after I'm cutting plastic. Alright, so here's what the tool looks like. You can see those marks that I marked. Um, that one mark was the end and the front mark was a different spot. I actually moved everything <laughs> so the marks were useless, but this is an interesting thing to show you. Okay, so now we moved on to the lathe. Now I'm just testing everything here and then I'm actually going to modify that a little bit more. So we're just going to clamp it in here, chuck some plastic in here, give it a little test run. So what I'm actually cutting right now is a piece of uh, plastic. I actually don't know what it is. I like this plastic. It cuts easy. It's nice to work with. But it's actually a bushing um, from an old TV stand. My, uh, my dad and I put a bunch of TV stands together and it always comes with extra hardware and I kept a bunch of it and uh, I use these things for everything but I'm about out of them otherwise I actually would have made the bearings out of this stuff I don't know what type of plastic this is but I really like it so we went ahead and made our cut alright so this is what it looks like this was a test piece um, this is a little bit smaller than what the finished one's going to be like but I'm just checking the profile now there's an interesting thing about this well first I want to show you how it fits in there it's not quite all the way down in the bottom and I actually wanted it to be alright so look if you if you really look at this piece it's actually got a two degree offset in it that's for a purpose I'll tell you about later but what I had to do is when I machined this I actually machined it enough to make that offset so when the wheels are in there it's actually square that's a bit of a treat okay so here I'm I wanted the profile to be finer so I used a fine tip, here's the original one next to the fine tipped one, and I just barely went in there and buffed it out. Just the edge. So that made it just a little deeper right on the edge as you can see there. And that's something I really wanted to do because I wanted them to be all the way down in there, which you'll find out in later videos that is actually sort of a mistake. So we'll get there later. So here it fits a lot better, like down inside those channels. I was, I was pretty satisfied with that. I think it looks pretty good. Not bad at all. Alright, so here's the acetone trick. Whoop! A little bit of acetone takes that marker right off. No problem. Now, if this was some other, something else that was sensitive, uh, it wouldn't be real good, but this high speed steel could care less about the acetone. Alright, so now what we're doing is we're going to cut the relief on the back side deeper. We need to cut it deeper so that the um, lathe, when we use the milling machine, or the lathe, I mean, it doesn't, uh, doesn't catch the bottom side of that. So I'm actually using the angle grinder, or I'm sorry, the Dremel tool here. And I'm just going to go through and I'm going to just touch everything up. I'm going to just kind of cut back a relief there. Um, I got the bulk of it with the, with the bench grinder, but I need to get the little stuff. So, using a Dremel tool, and I actually don't know what kind of um, abrasive wheel that is. It's not a cutoff wheel um, of the normal nature that's got the uh, fiberglass in there. This is something else. I love these wheels, but they are extremely fragile, and they will shatter and explode everywhere. So never look straight down it. I'm actually off to the side whenever I'm always looking at what I'm doing here. Okay, so here's the finished tool. You can see the relief cut in there almost all the way up to the top edge and everything's beveled back at an angle. Um, seems to cut really well but you definitely got to get it at the right height in the lathe. There's a little bit closer shot for you. You can see it a little clear how the, the relief is cut back in there. It's pretty important because otherwise it'll hit the non-sharp edge. That's bad. It's going to build up heat and melt stuff everywhere. Okay, so then we grab a piece of different plastic. This is the second type of plastic that I was going to use. Um, I won't get into the plastic I'm going to use in this video. So I tested some in this video so I could find out. So this is UHMW. Beautiful stuff. It's actually, it, you don't, this is really used for like bushings and metal 
uh, plastic on metal conditions where there is plastic hitting metal. It's pretty amazing how slick this uh, UHMW is. It's way cheaper than Teflon and uh, pretty good stuff. I've used it for all kinds of things. So there we go. That is UHMW, nylon, Teflon, that bushing, and then this, which is a polyamide type of plastic. Uh, in this little clip, you can see that little bitty notch in that ring. Okay, what I was doing here is I was actually testing each one of these. I, I put this up against the um, tool and then cocked the tool sideways. And I wanted to see how much damage it would do to the plastic. And this was sort of my determination on what type of plastic I used. You can see each one of these actually held up pretty well, but uh, the, most, the best one is actually that one right there. And I don't know what kind of plastic that is. I'll tell you later I figured that out. But uh, you can see those notches. Like I said, this was just a durability test for me to determine which type of plastic I ultimately wanted to choose. Okay, so that's, uh, that's what I did. Um, you know, originally uh, I thought a lot about different ways to put the rollers on here. You could put rollers on this slide. You could put rollers in all the way in. You could potentially put three or four all the way around. You could run them down the corner. Uh, you could do all sorts of different things. However, um, I thought for the smallest profile it would be cool if I could get them to run right on those small little rails. And hopefully that'll do me just fine. Um, these bearings have these tiny little you know flanges that I showed you in the video and hopefully that's helpful. Um, and the other thing is, is they do have a pin on the other side that's actually threaded. So if I really, really had to make a bracket that fit all the way around this and then sat on the side, um, which may actually be a better option. I might actually try to do something like that. I don't know if it's necessary, but you know, one extra precaution to, uh, to relieve stress on this bearing is going to be the best. Now that I think about it, it might actually be a good idea to do it that way. So we'll see, but uh, that's, that's it. I wanted to give you guys uh, a little bit of, uh, of what I've been doing. So there you go. Peace and love. Have a good day. See you on the next round. Leave a comment if you like. God bless. Hey, what's up everybody? So my name's Russ, rwresearch.com. So today I am going to show you how to take one of these turn it into something that looks like this and that is not focused.